Thank you all very much for being part of DVW Global with us. Great, thanks for inviting us. Um, I'm um, EJ Hurst, sales manager from New Society Publishers. And with joining me is Neva Murtha. She's the senior corporate campaigner from Canopy. Uh, we're speaking to you from the unceded territories of the Coast Salish people of the Pacific Northwest, also known as British Columbia, Canada. And the um, magic forest. Yes. <laughs> we're, uh, this afternoon, we're gonna share with you our vision of how publishers can help create a green and just economic recovery through the development of alternative paper supply chains based on the print on demand industry. So New Society, we are an activist solution based publishers. We publish books for a world of change and we care very deeply about uh, what we publish, but also how we do business. I was really pleased to hear Sherry Aldis and Scott Harris's presentation today on the UN um, Sustainable Development Goals. Um, we're going to flesh out their bigger, they had the bigger picture, we're going to go into the to some action items. Thanks EJ and thanks Bradley and Digital Book World for having us here today. Uh, I'm with Canopy. We're a not-for-profit forest conservation organization that's now international in scope and uh, we're 20 years old. Over the years, we've worked with more than 750 book publishers, magazine publishers, printers, uh, telecom, global fashion brands, and now um, fast-moving consumer good companies to help them develop um, leading purchasing policies designed to protect ancient and endangered forests. Uh, you know, tied into the magical forest in the presentation before. And uh, this presentation is very much uh, designed for those of you who are still uh, using paper and not just going totally digital. So uh, you may have heard of Canopy over the years if you heard about the Harry Potter books being printed on uh, recycled and FSC paper in 24 countries. That was because of us and uh, work that uh, New Society helped us start way back 20 years ago. So I'm thrilled to be here today to talk a little bit about this and our vision for leading low footprint solutions going forward. So one of the reasons or the main reason that Canopy does this work to protect ancient and endangered forests is because they're simply irreplaceable. These forests are for storybook creatures and like the caribou in Canada or you know, orangutans and tigers and elephants and well, maybe not elephants, but um, Storybook creatures, and once they're gone, they're gone. This is where original forests, which is a component of ancient and endangered forests, existed 8,000 years ago around the world. Today, only 20% of those forests remain. So this is basically uh, because of human impact in the last couple hundred years. So of course you can replant trees, and of course there are trees in the white areas, but they simply don't have the same uh, ecosystem service values, carbon storage values, et cetera, of the ancient and endangered forests. Because ancient and endangered forests are simply not renewable in our lifetime and for hundreds and even thousands of years. So, and the UN is now pointing out that forests represent 30% of the climate solution. So that contribute, or that includes keeping intact forest landscapes intact and restoring degraded and fragmented areas. And the publishing community can actually help and has helped over the years. So this is a photo of Clackowit Sound, which is essentially the backyard that EJ and I share um, a little bit to the west of us. And it is definitely one of the ancient and endangered forest areas in the world with huge carbon storage and biodiversity values. And in, this is recent um, clear cut in a similar forest on Vancouver Island. So this is about being careful about what you're told is sustainable because this is legal. This is framed by industry as uh, sustainable logging in Canada. This uh, could be coming from certified areas, but this is simply not sustainable. There's so much carbon that was released at the time of logging this and um, you just can't grow those values back in any short period of time. Thanks, Neva. Yeah, that last slide for anyone living in this Pacific Northwest, those are the landscapes we see. So when we leave the limits of our urban developments, that's our reality. That's what we travel through. 
So as book publishers, uh, we have a responsibility to consider and respond to the role that we play in that destruction. Um, I'd like to share with you the environmental and social uh, responsibility standards of New Society. We're one of Canada's largest independent publishers and we're North America's leading sustainable book publisher. Uh, we've been very successful in committing to a triple bottom line approach, people, planet and profit. I was pleased to hear uh, Sherry Aldis point to paper production supply and carbon offsets, carbon impacts, carbon footprints, because those were the two uh, points I wanted to speak to today. That's the place where publishers really can push the needle more than anywhere else. So uh, I'll start with uh, paper. New Society prints on 100% post-consumer recycled paper. In 2002, our co-founder, Christopher Plant, he was inspired by David Suzuki's, um, uh, what was his called? The, um, oh dear. Oh, the turnaround decade. The turnaround decade was in the 90s. Sherry Aldis called us to action on the, the decade of action, which we're in now. That's 30 years later. So I'm going to give you an example of what action actually looks like. So Christopher Plant committed to printing all his books on 100% post-consumer paper. However, he had a problem. Uh, there wasn't any paper available. Uh, so he worked with Canopy and he worked with uh, Friesen's Printing of Manitoba and he purchased a container load of 100% post-consumer recycled paper. Uh, this far exceeded his paper needs for New Society's printing program at the time, but by doing so he opened the door for other publishers to follow in his footprint. And when J.K. Rawlings went looking for a printer capable of printing her book on 100% post-consumer recycled paper, Friesen's was ready and they won the con contract. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about is how we're carbon neutral. So our biggest carbon reduction comes through our paper use. Uh, publishing studies have shown that if you're printing on virgin paper, FSC certified, but virgin paper, that will contribute to 60% of your carbon footprint. So simply by changing our paper, we have a small, uh, our carbon footprint is half of a, of, a, of a publisher that's not using that paper. Our next biggest carbon impact comes from shipping. And that's why the print on demand solution is very appealing to us. Uh, we do use carbon offsets. So we're a carbon neutral company. We purchase our offsets locally through the Vancouver Island community based carbon marketplace. But uh, offsets are a band aid solution at best. And what we would really like to do is reduce our carbon footprint as much as we possibly can. So we've got a business model that demonstrates uh, success doesn't have to come at the cost of the planet of the environment or people. And uh, thank you, EJ. So uh, you, though we've been using the example of the forest in the Pacific Northwest and how they're in, be impacted uh, by pulp and paper and other resource extraction, this is also happening in the boreal globally, in Indonesia, in Brazil. So anywhere where there's original forests and even um, longstanding managed forests and plantations, uh, there are opportunities to reduce your footprint. So this is a, a tool that uh, Canopy has created and it's been broadly supported by environmental organizations globally that defines uh, leading low footprint paper options with the superior step being uh, maximized recycled content, pre-consumer recycled content and agricultural residue fiber, which is a next gen solution that's been identified by Canopy for many, many, many years. And one of the reasons we're having this conversation today. So like things like leftover wheat straw, leftover after the grain harvest that might otherwise be burned and cause its own, you know, environmental issues. And then where virgin fiber or wood fiber is necessary that it be FSC certified. And on the issue of, or the opportunity to use papers using agricultural residue, um, being based in Canada and working internationally, we wanted to prove that you could make a really beautiful paper with uh, wheat straw uh, in a North American mill with famous authors. So we worked with Margaret Atwood and Yann Martel and Alice Munro and Atwood's publisher Random House and Roland and uh, Friesen's and Webcom, now Marquis, and we actually had to bring Wheat, oh, and a technical expert from Alberta. And we had to bring wheat straw pulp in from China 
and mix it in with recycled content from Roland at Roland's Mill in Quebec to do this one-off and produce these books. And they're absolutely beautiful. And we had to bring the wheat strain from China because at the time there was no commercial scale pulping infrastructure large enough to meet the, the volume that we needed to run the trial. So we've been doing a lot of work to speed up uh, investment in agriculture residue pulping technology, not only in North America, but globally. So this year in January, during the World Economic Forum in Davos, we launched this report that outlines a very, very bold vision around um, investing in and building new agricultural residue fiber pulp mills, recycled pulp mills, and also some mills for clothing for viscose and rayon that is also impacting ancient and endangered forests. And the vision outlines, you know, this investment potential of a mere 69 billion. And I realize your jaw might be dropping right now when she's talking about 69 billion, but to put it in perspective, they sold Botox last year for 63 billion. So, you know, forests, climate, the ability for all of us to breathe, or, you know, puffy cheeks and lips. I think it's a, kind of a no brainer. So part of this report uh, looks at where there's agricultural residue left over after uh, existing practices in various countries around the world and then identifies how many mills could go in those regions. And it's mapped here and this report is available on the canopy uh, on canopyplanet.org. Thank you, Neva. So uh, when I saw that map, that's when the penny dropped for me and I'll, I'll explain some more. So it's challenging times in the publishing industry for sure. Um, in, 2020, in 2010, there were 500,000 titles in print. In 2020, there's 16 million. So if you think about that like a pie, uh, in the book market has, it has grown about 1% annually. So our pie is basically the same size, and yet the number of slices we need to take out of that pie has increased by 16 fold. So the impact of this on the economic um, stability of the publishing industry has been enormous. Add to that the fragility of supply chains, the carbon footprint from paper sourcing, shipping and printing, and the print on demand solution begins to look very appealing indeed. Take Lightning Source, um, the Ingram Lightning Source program for an example. In July 2020, all top 10 New York Times paperback bestsellers were being printed at Lightning Source. They've got seven and a half million titles they have five printing locations in North America, UK, and Australia. And through their Global Collect alliances, they can print in several European countries, Russia, China, South Korea, and Brazil. And Eva, I don't know if you can pop back to that map, but this is what, where I started to connect the dot. This is, these are the places that Canopy has identified the potential to build an alternative paper industry. A lot of those countries are where um, Ingram and Lightning Source is able to print as well as other print on demand printers. So uh, at Lightning Source in 2017, they spent millions of dollars upgrading their printers to the Hewlett Packard page wide T240 color and mono digital printers. These printers are uh, capable of printing high quality products on recycled paper. At this point, LSI is sourcing only FSA certified paper, which if you recall, Neva's paper standards is, is the second tier um, and there's a way to go before reaching the gold standard. So this is where the opportunity is for publishers and distributors. As we begin to embrace the print on demand revolution, which is coming, at the same time, if we can embrace that recycled paper, alternative paper, uh, locally sourced and get behind those industries in those countries, we can be part of a green and sustainable just economic recovery. So that brings us to our calls to action. When you're building a sustainability program of any sort, not necessarily in publishing, the first place you look to is material efficiency. And that's what the print on demand offers. You're gonna print only what you need, uh, where you need it, when you need it. And there's, uh, you cut down on um, excess print funds and you also really cut down on shipping which will in turn cut down your carbon footprint. So as you look at that, our second call to action is to maximize recycled content. So we're asking printers to print more on recycled paper. Work with your printers, work with your distributors. Um, 
ask for the recycled paper and don't let anyone tell you that the product will be poor quality. It's simply not true anymore. There's been so much innovation in both the printers, the ink and the paper. Many POD printers like Marquis and Bookmobile already print on 100% post-consumer recycled paper. For those of you working with Ingram and Lightning Source, they are trying to source the paper and they're looking into it. Um, I've had a few conversations with them and they're quite willing to bring that paper in. What they need to do is demonstrate demand. So that's where you come in as publishers. Talk to your reps, uh, let them know how many titles will you print? How much will you print? What are you willing to pay? Um, and let's let's get this uh, let's get this change happening. In this way, we if we all work together, then we can help grow the demand. Canopy's made two great tools that can help you with this. Uh, the first is the Eco Data um, Paper Base, which will help you find the, the recycled and alternative papers. And the second is the Blue Line Printer Rankings. So Neva is going to walk you through both of those tools. Yeah. Thanks, CJ. So here's a link to the EcoPaper database at, at this URL, and this is this year when we launched or relaunched it. Um, we made it global in scope because of the global nature of our brand partners. And right now it's sorted for uh, agriculture residues. Uh, and there's actually more than 250 agriculture residue paper and packaging grades listed in the database. There's also a lot of book grades from North America and uh, Europe with uh, hundred percent or very high recycled content. I've done the work for you and uh, identified where in the paper steps it falls and uh, you can sort by uh, any of the, the filters here and you can um, sort it all sorts of different ways. So this is a free resource. You can go to our website and find it and it'll help you um, talk with your printers in different regions about what papers could be used for your, for your print runs, but also your packaging if you're still shipping books around. And another tool is for uh, those of you in North America, our blue line ranking is assessing uh, forest conservation leadership among printers. And there are a couple of book printers ranked in here. You can sort it by type. Um, uh, under innovation, we look at how they're supporting um, agriculture residue market scale up uh, under paper supply chain shifts. We're looking at how they support recycled and FSC paper markets. And you can click on any of the printer's names to see in, in more detail what they're doing in those areas. And the URL for that is right here. Other things that you can do include uh, drawing next gen fibers to market and uh, actually working with Canopy to create letters of support to create investment um, uh, or it's proof of proof of demand for investment interest looking to help scale up the vision that we put in the survival report. So uh, that's a kind of a twofold process and uh, we do have a number of global brand partners already who've written support and, or letters of support and you can help by um, doing a letter with us and um, we would add that in an aggregated number to drive investment in these regions. Thanks Neva. So with great challenges come great opportunities. By committing and supporting action on recycled and alternative papers, hand in hand with your shift to print on demand, we as publishers have an opportunity to transform the publishing industry, build resilient local economies, help us recover from COVID, and help preserve the environment that's criti critical to all of our futures. So if there's any publishers who'd like to speak with me and find out more, uh, my email is there, ej at newsociety.com, and uh, Neva is there as well if you'd like to contact her. And yeah, happy to talk with you about how you can support the scale up of uh, agricultural residue and next gen solutions. Thank Neva you. and EJ, yeah, this is great. Um, great job on the presentation. And uh, if you want to un uh, unshare your screen, um, that would be good. Um, Thank you for being part of Digital Book World with us. Um, I, I love the, the, the passion that you are uh, exhibiting. I love the cause, uh, the information that you put together. It's not something that uh, when we acquired Digital Book World, I had ever seen uh, be part of this conference before. And, um, and so we're, we're honored that you've joined us um, and uh, excited that you were able to share some of this and, and uh, keep things moving in the direction of uh, 
the planet lasting a little bit longer than uh, than it otherwise would have. We thank you very much. Yeah, thank yeah, you thanks. for having us. Mm -hmm.